as I seek to serve you, may you find in me what's pleasing to your heart. I leave my will at Calvary, taking on a nature humbled by your scars. For I know it's only through your love that who I am is here. May my desires be overshadowed as I recall the purpose of that place. Hide me behind the cross where my gains become as lost and only your glory. If I rely on my strength to be a source of hope for those in need, the only profit I would gain would be the empty honor of my deed. But with all of self behind your cross, the splendor of your love stands free to shine. Illuminating with your power, reaching souls so that you alone are glorified. So hide me behind the cross where my gains become as long. Thank you for that good song, Miss Shirley. Thank you so very much. Well, we've talked the last four messages. Uh, this will be our fifth in our series um, about a month of thanks. And it's just been, uh, November went by quickly. I mean, really, really quickly. And uh, But I, I've enjoyed uh, kind of stirring my heart, I guess. And hopefully you've got some help out of it. But when we talked about thanks, we talked the first week about Jesus as the reason for this season. I know we talk about the Christmas season. Uh, but Jesus is the reason for the Thanksgiving season. He's the reason that we have anything to be thankful for. And so we talked about that the first week. We talked about the order, uh, be thankful. That's an order that, that he gives us a, an order to, that we ought to be thankful. And uh, that's, it's, not, it's not optional. Uh, God tells us that we as his people ought to be thankful, be a thankful people. Then we talked the third message, we talked about Thanksgiving praying, uh, how that we ought to pray with Thanksgiving and be grateful in our prayers. And tell God that. Then we talked last week, of course, about a time of testimony, about what it's like to just give testimony to the Lord. And uh, so that was an encourage. Last week was an encouraging service for me, and I praise the Lord for what He always does, seems to do on those Thanksgiving services. Well, tonight uh, we're going to be here. This is our fifth and our final message in our series. And so take your Bibles and go to the book of Second Corinthians tonight. And uh, got, it's a long scripture reading tonight. So once you find your place, go ahead and stand. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, <clears throat> verse 15 says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Some of y'all didn't even get standing. <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. That's a relatively short verse uh, for a very lengthy subject. And I don't want you to get nervous. I'm not planning on preaching a long time tonight. 
Um, but when we, when we look at this passage of Scripture, I want you to just, just listen for a minute. But thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. And I want you to hold on to that word, unspeakable. And so let's go to the Lord more to prayer. Uh, one more time in service tonight. Brother Terry, if you would, take us a little in prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You can be seated. Uh, our, our final message, as we mentioned, this whole chapter uh, is really a chapter that deals with this, with this very thought. Now, there's a lot of times, if you've been in, uh, you've been in church for any, any length of time, or particularly around missions conferences or missions meetings, uh, this passage of Scripture is really, 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, is, is heavily preached uh, regarding missions because it's a, it's a chapter about giving. It's a chapter about our giving, and, and he's, uh, he's reassuring them, and he is encouraging them that they'll continue in their, in their giving that supports the ministry. And, and we're honored, by the way, we're honored. We heard a mission letter, and God has honored us in allowing us to support missionaries and to send funds and to, to have a little part of their, of their work. And we all can't go to Africa. We all can't go to, to Iowa. We all can't go to, uh, to Spain. We all can't go to Brazil. But what we can do is we can all have a part in getting these people to these different places. And so all of these people in the church of Corinth, they couldn't go to the places that the Apostle Paul went. They couldn't go to every city. They couldn't go to every town. They couldn't go to every uh, nation of people. Yet what they could do was they could make up offerings and bounty, as the, as the Bible uses that word, and send the Apostle Paul, send the others, so that the gospel could be preached, Churches can be started. And so really, if you look at missions from that, from that standpoint, it's an exciting thing that we, all the way here at the end of 2022, are still able to partake in what God instituted way, way back in the early church, that God is still allowing believers to have a part in this work. And so the giving of, uh, into that is a great thing. But I want you to understand tonight that this is a passage on giving. And Paul, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, wraps up the chapter by saying this, but thanks be unto God, or thanks be unto God, rather, for His unspeakable gift. Now, when you look at it from that, from that understanding is, Paul is saying, listen, let me give you a motivator to your giving. Let me give you a motivator as to why you're involved in the work of God and why that you're able to do what you do. We're able to give because of the greatest gift that's ever been given. And so he's talking about this portion of Scripture. He said, thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. And we'll look at that word uh, in a little, bit, uh, a little bit closer here in just a moment. Have you ever gotten a gift that's just like, wow, and you don't, you don't really know, you're just kind of overwhelmed by it? I mean, it's a great gift, and it, it's, it's something that, that takes a hold of your heart, and, and you really, you want, to, you want to tell everybody about it, but you don't really know how to put into words the amount of that gift. Um, some, of, some of you that, that's, that's experienced a, a wedding proposal. Uh, now, some, some fellows are really good at it. Some of us didn't do it the best that we could have. And, but, you know, sometimes, you know, some, some guys are just mushy, romantic types. Sorry. Uh, I mean, and, and you know, and, and they're... Uh, they're, they're Soon to be spouse, they just can't wait to go tell their girlfriends about all. Oh, he did this and he did that, and the more they try to tell it, while their girlfriends might be excited for them, they really can't understand the emotion that that young lady has gone through. That you that that young lady might just be just over the moon, uh, brother Joe, Miss Carrie. She probably felt just like this. I mean, she probably couldn't wait to describe the amount of the romance that you that you displayed. Uh, such as how you wrap your Christmas gifts. I mean, you are known for the wonderful job. Miss Carrie's back there doing that. Okay, so uh, now we can, we can kind of chuckle about that, but let me tell you that it's, it's almost like, man, there's something in here that I want to get out, but I can't get out to the fullest effect of what is in here. That is the ideal behind this unspeakable gift. And so it's a gift that's like, man, it's just, I can't, I can't describe it. Last Tuesday during our testimony service, I picked up on, on a couple different people, uh, and they made this statement. They said, uh, thank you just doesn't seem like it's enough. Thank you just doesn't seem like it's enough. Now, I, I believe that thank you to the Lord is enough, and I'm grateful for that. God is a very gracious God, but when you look at the size and the amount of that gift that God has given, just to say thank you just seems, it just doesn't seem enough. 
All right, and so Paul said, but thanks, he said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Uh, one of the verses um, that we're going to give out in, in, in the parade Saturday, it's on a card, is the latter part of Romans 6, 23, which says this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the word gift in Romans 6, 23 is different than the word, than the word gift here, but it does all point to the same person. It does all point to the same thing. Now, there is a significance to both words, and it's a really, it's a really good significance. I'm glad God knows what he's doing. When God does anything, God puts it in order. God knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, but but it, it, it's a word there in Romans 6. It points to the provision of God for man to have eternal life. What a gift. What a gift. When you read the whole, the whole entire passage in Romans 6, we deserve death. As sinners, we deserve an awful destiny in a place called hell. And yet God acknowledges us as a sinner and yet God in his love presented us a gift and an offering of salvation over and above the circumstance which we deserve. So instead of getting hell that I deserve, God offers me heaven. Amen. Instead of having eternal death, God offers me eternal life. Now how do you put that gift into words? Thus Paul said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Now here's the challenge. If there's something that is inexpressible, I mean, I, words can't describe, how in the world am I supposed to stand up here and preach about something that can't be preached upon? How am I supposed to explain something that is, or describe something that's in and of itself indescribable? Well, welcome, welcome to my world. Uh, when you look at it, I mean, how do you, how do you put into words the, the significance? And that's the key word right there the significance of what God has offered to a sinful man. And man, what a, what a significant gift. Now, we are privileged to be able to share with others what Jesus has done. We're privileged to share with others. But I'm going to tell you, it's almost like one of those things, unless you know, you just don't know. Uh, and unless you, unless you have, have, have trusted Christ, you re when I got saved, I really didn't know all the ramifications of what it meant to be saved. I knew what other people said about it, but I really didn't. But once you know, man, you know. Now, I know that. Just hang with me. Don't, don't check out on me for just a minute. But, but when we look at this, at this, at this gift, I, I'm not attempting tonight to describe it. I just want you to go ahead and get, just go on record. I'm not going to sit here to attempt to describe the gift and all of the things, but here's what I want to do, and this is the real matter of it. The preaching tonight is going to be really simple. The preaching tonight is going to be really familiar. And so I want you to, to go ahead and just write that down. Uh, I've probably heard it before. You can put a big note. But here's what I want us to do. I want you, as, as I preach tonight, I want you to genuinely and purposefully think about what's being said. Now, before we just assume that that's an easy thing to do, there's a lot of times that our minds are so preoccupied on everything else, even during a message. There's a lot of times that we've already begun to think about tomorrow. We already begin to think about yesterday. Uh, you know, it can kind of be that way in our prayer life, can it? Maybe not yours, but there's times that I pray and I'm trying to talk to God and there's 10,000 things going through my mind. And I'm like, dear Lord, this, I want to talk to you and I can't get this junk out of my mind. I mean, we're, our minds are so scattered. Well, for the next little while, I want to use the word tonight, ponder. I want you to ponder on some things with me. And genuinely think along with me as I preach. And, and so I'm asking you tonight to engage your mind. Okay, that means you got to engage, that means to put it in gear. I don't know where your mind's at right now. I don't, I don't know if you're already thinking about supper and you're already thinking about the day tomorrow. You got a burden and the weight from the, from, from the, the previous hours of today. Whatever that is, I'm going to ask you specifically tonight to engage your mind in what's being said. Because what's being said tonight, we are, we are to be thankful for God's unspeakable gift. And I think the message tonight will not only will it end us and, 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 and draw to a conclusion this month of thanks, but I also think it opens the door for the Christmas season that we're now worshiping Christ for His coming. All right, because He is ultimately God's unspeakable gift. All right, so let's look at a few things tonight and let's see if the Lord will help us this evening. First of all... Uh, I want you to think about, engage your mind to the value of God's gift. The value of God's gift. Now, there are certain things in life that we would describe as invaluable. In other words, you can't put a price on it. 
Uh, you, you know, money couldn't buy. You know, sentiment. A lot of things that are sentimental are invaluable. There are things that now I'm, I'm not. The older I get, the more sentimental that I am. My wife makes fun of me. My wife is very sentimental. Uh, like if the kids did something in second grade, we'll still find paperwork in the in the attic somewhere. I mean, and then it's oh, I knew I saved that, and I remember him making that, and I, you know, whatever. Now, the older I get, the, the more I become that way. I'm getting softer, Brother Terry. It's pitiful. I ain't going to be worth nothing. When I get as old as you, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> and, uh, but, but sentiment, man, there, there is valuableness. He'll, he'll, I'll pay for that. There's, 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 there's a certain level of valuableness, if that's a word, a uh, value that, that holds just because of something being sentimental. You know why? You can't get another one. They don't, they don't make, they're not making those anymore. My kids will never, ever be seven again. Never. They will never make the little arts and crafts and vacation Bible school and bring home, and it looks like, you know, Picasso at an early age. You'll never get that again. Now, we laugh about that, but I'm going to tell you, when you find those things, all of a sudden, those things you may have forgot, all of those things now, they now become precious. And valuable. You know why? You can't get another one. And there's none that's ever, they're, they're, they're literally a one-off. There's no more like them anywhere. And so we use that word invaluable because there's no amount of monetary money that can purchase or buy these things. Webster gives this definition of invaluable. Precious above estimation. Now when you read that verse again, listen to what he says. Thanks be unto God for his precious above estimation gift. Man, I'm telling you, how do, I, how do I value eternity? How do you put a value? What would you sell for your eternity? What would you trade for eternity in heaven? I'm going to tell you something. The world trades a lot for it. The world trades a lot for it. But let me, I'm asking you, what would you trade for it? What would you take for your eternity? What is it that you would take and say, okay, God, my life is more important, it's more valuable than the gift that you have to offer? And so invaluable, uh, precious above estimation. So we're going to use Webster's word tonight for just a moment, this word, precious. All right, so what makes God's gift so precious? Now, I'm asking you to engage your mind. I know that you know these facts. I understand that you're probably familiar with this, and so I'm not, I'm not trying to preach beneath you, okay? That's not what I'm... I'm not trying to assume that I have this great wisdom. It's not it. I want you to engage your mind and think, what really makes... This gift, valuable. Now, we could preach a long time on this, and so I'm just going to give you a couple things that you think about it. What makes God's gift so precious? One simple answer is this. It's, it's so valuable a gift because of the, the weight of the gift, which is simply this. God came to man. Now, he didn't have to do that. You ever just thought about, you ever just sat and thought about something? The Bible talks about meditating. Have you ever just thought, now meditation, we, we get a bad rap because we think about crossing your legs, you know, putting your fingers together and, oh, my, I'm not talking about that foolishness. I'm talking about sitting and thinking, just, just thinking, using your God-given brain to think. Have you ever thought about the significance and the, and the seriousness of the matter that a holy and a righteous, sovereign God would leave heaven and come and dwell with us. That God who, listen, we are, we, you realize that we are nothing in, in, in comparison to who God is. I mean, we're just, we're frail. I mean, you, you just think, it, it, you, can, you can walk along perfectly fine, and one day you get some news, and a month, you're gone. We're frail. I mean, our, life, our lives are feeble. Watch how our bodies break down. What, watch how the, I mean, we're, we're frail, and we're talking about an all majestic, all, all, all powerful, all righteous God would come to man. I'm telling you something, there, there's value in that gift. There's value because he is precious tonight. God came to man. I like this. It's not just that God gave man a gift. God gives us, we have, he gave us a gift of life. If, you, if you're sitting in this room tonight, let me tell you something. God's blessed you because you're breathing. God's, God's blessed us with living in the country that we live in. If you don't think so, visit outside the boundaries of it. 
God's blessed us with this. God's blessed us in our... Somebody said last Thursday, thank, thank God for the county we live in, for the town we live in. God's blessed us with that. God's blessed us with life. God's blessed, all, but I'm not talking about a gift that God has, has just given to us. All right? He didn't just give us a gift, but the gift is precious is because God became the gift. Now listen, it's one thing for God to say, okay, I'm in heaven, you need this, here it is. You know, here, you need a little bit of money to pay your bills, okay, here you go. And by the way, that's the God that most of the world wants. They want the God of handout. I'm, I, and aren't you glad God provides? Aren't you glad God takes care? I, I'm not negating that, but don't overlook the, the blessings of God that is just a handout because God's not just giving out. God came and said, hey, I am your gift. You can have all of me. There's no part of me that you can't have access to. There's no part of me that won't be restored in a relationship. God's not holding part back. He said you can have everything. He said you can have me. Can you imagine what kind of gift that is? He said, listen, you can, you can have me. We didn't want God, but God wanted us. What a gift. What a gift. There is no other. You think about, you think about us. You think about who you are. Don't, don't think about the person beside you. Just think about the things about you that only you know. You wouldn't tell anybody. You don't share it with your spouse. You know, I mean, I mean these, these are things that, listen, only you know, and, and you're praying for God to help you to work on it. And, and by the way, we all got them. And God knows all of that. And yet God said, listen, you may not want me, but I'm going to tell you something. I want you. And you can't come to me, but I can come to you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable, precious gift. And so God came as, as, the, as the gift. So ponder that for just a minute. God gave himself to you. Now it's easy to say God gave himself for you, but I'm telling you tonight, God literally gave himself to you. He is offering himself. You know what we do when we tell our friends and our loved ones and our co-workers about Jesus Christ? We tell them that, listen, God is offering himself to you. Now there's a stipulation. The only way we're going to get him is to come through Jesus Christ. Okay, don't, don't, don't get caught up in the world's warm and fuzzy that everybody can have God. They can, but they're going to have to go through God's way, the gift, which is Jesus Christ. But God is offering, he has offered himself. And so, by the way, Christ said, he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. And so there's an offer, it's a legitimate offer. So the, the, the preciousness of God's gift. You say, well, how do you know? You mean, well, he sent Christ. He didn't really come. Well, the Bible tells us that he and Christ are one and the same. John 1, 1 through 4, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. You, so you have the creator, and you have the creature, and the creator came down to the creature. The creator came down to the created and said, listen, you can have me. Man, I'm telling you, what a gift. He said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the word was made flesh, verse 14, and dwelt among us. God, the word, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then John writes again over in 1 John, he says, that which was from the beginning, the eternal God. Each, by the way, eternal doesn't just mean he lives from this point forward. It means he's always been. The eternal God, that which was in the beginning, our beginning, not his. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word, capital W, of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. God gave himself to men. So what's the price of the gift? Remember I told you there was two words, right? We're still pondering, right? You're still using your brain. All right, there was two words for, for gift that I told you. One was Romans 6.23. Basically, we are the recipients of God's benevolence. We, we are the recipients of the grace of God and that God provided salvation, eternal life for those who otherwise couldn't have it. But this, this word gift in this text refers not just to the, to the significance as far as what we get, but it also refers to the cost that we pay for it. Now, I said all that, that's a big way to say this. This word means that it's a free gift. Free. Write that, keep that word in your mind. Free. How much 
does this gift cost you? It's free. It's free. Stop trying to work for it. Stop trying to do good enough to get it. Stop trying to feel bad long enough that you feel like God will pity you. You don't have to do any of that. It's free. It's free. Listen, there's great news to tell lost loved ones. Salvation is free. It don't cost you anything. You don't have to go to church to get it. You don't have to pray to get it. You don't have to, 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 to say 23 Hail Marys and offer up this and eat a wafer and drink a cup. You don't have to do any of that. It's free. Why? He's the gift. He's the gift. Now, after salvation, man, all that stuff starts falling in line, doesn't it? Man, after salvation, I want to be where the one that provided my salvation tells me to be. I want to serve him. I want to be part of that. But I'm not doing that in order to earn my salvation because salvation is a free gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable free gift. Man, the word gift is it's, it's an amazing. It, uh, one guy said this. It refers to the economy of divine grace by which the pardon of sin and eternal salvation appointed to sinners is in consideration for the merits of Christ laid hold of faith. That's a long way of saying the Romans 6.23 free. All right, but in our text, it, as it deals with the uh, un, un, unpurchasable gift, it denotes a free gift stressing its gratuitous nature. It is always used in the New Testament of a spiritual or a supernatural gift. A gift that is supernatural means you can't buy it, you can't earn it, you can't work it up, you can't build it, you can't assemble it, you can't be religious enough to get it. It is divinely supernatural. Can I tell you, salvation is wholeheartedly supernatural. Man, the only thing man can do is mess it up. But man, I'm telling you, the gift is supernatural. It's God giving himself as a gift. Now, it's used this way, Romans 5.15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Romans 5 is a passage that talks about how we're all sinners from Adam. We've all inherited death because of our father, father Adam. He said, but as in Adam all die. But then he goes on to say, but not as the offense or the fall of Adam, so also is the free gift. Same word. Is the free gift, for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Who is the gift? Jesus is the gift. Our parade, our float, the parade, the theme of, that, of the float is the greatest gift of all. Going to be a big package in the back of my truck says the greatest gift of all. All kind of little gifts around the bottom of, of, the, of the float. One big bright red package that says Jesus that's got to take. It says for whosoever will. Say so why? He is the greatest gift of all. Of anything you can ever imagine. And he's free. He's free. Now listen, it's not one of, those, it's not one of them bookstore frees. I, I had no intention of using this, but when I made an announcement, you know, it's Christmas time. Man, they, they, they'll get you hooked up to spend a bunch of money. Bath and Body Works got me the other week. Not me, it got her, but it's the same account. So in essence, it got me. Spend so much money and you get such and such and such and such. So we spent 30 more dollars. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I know this. I got two more soaps and $30 less. That's all I know. Spend this and we'll give you a free. If I got to spend something to get something, it ain't free. Now, that being said, erase all that for just a minute because I want you to go by the bookstore and buy a book and we'll give you a free gift. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This ain't that kind of free, my friend. It's not to where you work a little bit and God will give a little bit and you work a little more and if you do all of this, then you can have the free gift. Oh, no, my friend. Listen, it's free. It's been bought and paid for by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't work for it. I don't earn it. I don't merit it. I don't try to be good enough to get it. I don't try to have to be good enough to keep it. It is a free, 100% God-given supernatural gift. Think about that. when you. But thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Man, what a gift. We have the opportunity to tell a whole world about it. Man, think about how much of it, go, how, how, how valuable it can be that everybody can have some of it. Man, it's not, it's not Black Friday where the first hundred people through the door gets in on it. It's not Cyber Monday to where if you click within the first two hours, you get in. No, no, no. Man, it's, it's been good ever since he's offered it. Ever since he's offered it. Think about it. Ponder on that. Ponder on the fact that it's an unspeakable free gift. Man, the value of God's gift. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. The virtue of God's gift. The virtue. 
Man, I got time. Virtue is a beneficial quality of, or value of something. In other words, it tells us there's, there's benefit to this or there's, there's a quality of something. Now, the definition that I read when we started all this, express, the, the gift expresses the gratuitous character uh, of the gift. In other words, it, God's been good to us. God's not stingy. God's not being selfish. God's not trying to hold back. The world will try to say, well, listen, God's trying to keep this from you. you know, by the way, if you want to know where that philosophy comes from, go back to your Bible to the garden. You know what Satan told Eve? Well, it's not really going to kill you. God just don't want you to be that wise. God, Eve, God is keeping something from you. That's not the character of God. That's not the character of God. That is a lie from the pit. And you can identify that, but I want you to look at the virtue of this gift. All right, and so I, I, I probably hit some of this already in the first point because it's hard to preach on, on the, the value of the gift without hitting this, but I really want to take just a little bit of time to focus on this. So I want to notice the beneficial quality of this gift because we're, we're kind of selfish people, right? We don't want to admit it, but, but how's it, how does it benefit me? I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes, you, you know, you watch people get gifts and you're excited for them somewhere down in the, your gut, but on the outside, it's like, that don't help me any. Great, you got a new car. Ooh. I'm still driving this hoopty that I've been in for whatever. I, I, I don't mean that. The Lord's been good to me. But you understand what I'm saying? You, we want to know, how does this benefit me? Well, can I tell you something? This unspeakable gift didn't just benefit Paul. This unspeakable gift didn't just benefit the church of Corinth. We are still preaching about this gift, which is ever more just as real as it's ever been. And there is benefit. There's value to this thing. You say, well, what is in fact the gift? What exactly, preacher, is the significance of it? Let me give it to you like this. The sinless in this gift took the place of the sinful. Now, you may not appreciate that, but if you ever see yourself honestly before God as a sinner, you see, that's the key of appreciation. You've got to understand and see the significance. You've got to see yourself as God sees you. Now, when you do that, you're also going to see, not only do I see how God sees me, but I'll also be able to appreciate God and how he presents himself to me as the way God sees me. That as a sinner, God loved me in that condition and sent his son so that I wouldn't have to remain in that condition. The sinless came and took the place of the sinful. Man, that's the significance of it. Because there's not anybody in this room under the sound of my voice, including yours truly, who is not a sinner by birth. None of us. Now listen, if you sit here and say, well, preacher, well, not me. Well, I'm not as bad as somebody else. Then you ought to take a deeper look because you are. I'm t I've told this story before, but when I first started pastoring, I'll never forget, as long as I'm in my right mind, we went to visit a man that was part of the church. We've had a few rocky days over the years and he's long, long not part of the church now, but that man looked me in the eyes and told me just point blank and he said, listen, I'm not as bad as they are. Now my flesh back then wasn't as refined as it is now. But I, I, was, I didn't hurt him. But what I wanted to say is, no, you're exactly right. You're worse. You're worse. He said, I'm not as bad as they are. Let me tell you something. We are sinners by nature. And until we see ourselves as sinners by nature, we'll not appreciate the value that God came as the sinless and he took the place of the sinful. That's what makes Calvary so valuable. Jesus didn't hang there on that cross uh, as, a, as a penance or as a payment for his own sin. He hung there for my sin and for your sin. Surely we can look and think about that and see, listen, the sinless came for the sinful and he paid what I owed. Thanks be unto God. For his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's a pretty good trade. God said, listen, I'm going to take your sin. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your sin, and I'm going to take your death. And in exchange for that, I'm going to give you life. That's a gift. I'm going to take all of the bad. I'm going to take all of the vileness. I'm going to take all the filth. I'm going to take all the impurity. I'm going to take the sin nature, everything that you've ever done or are. He said, I'm going to take it to Calvary. 
and I'm going to die, I'm going to bear the shame of that. I'm, those, those, those wicked, perverse thoughts, I'm going to bear the shame of that. That, that sinful, uh, Adamic nature, that, that sinful heart, I'm going to pay that debt, but here's what I'm going to do in exchange for that. I'm going to take that, but I'm going to give you me. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you my righteousness. I'm going to give you my peace. I'm going to give you hope for eternity. I'm going to, I'm going to let you into my family. I'm going to open up. I, I'm going to give you in my home. He said, I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to give you all of it. That's the virtue of the gift. It's not a cheap gift. It's not, it's not a gift like we give out to those that, you know, well, I've got to give them something. You know, it's not, <clears throat> we, we, were, we were in, in Sam's the other day buying candy. Good gracious, candy's expensive. We was going through buying candy. Let me tell you, let me tell you our, our thought process. But the child was gracious enough to go with me. We were going down through the aisle trying to get this candy. We were trying to figure out the most bang for the buck. That's, that's the truth. Man, we got to throw these out. And they're going to rip it up and tear it. And they're going to devour it anyway. So listen, with this and well, you could, this gets 220 pieces in this. And there's only 165 in this, but they're the same price. We're going to get this one with the 220 in it. You say, why? Well, I wasn't really concerned with their taste buds. I'm not concerned with their favor. I was concerned about the budget numbers. Listen, that's, it's not that kind of gift. Man, the virtue of the gift, that God would take our, the worst of our... And he'd say, I'm going I'm to trade you, and I'm going to give you me. My life, my righteousness, my hope, my joy, my peace, my comforter. I'm going to take, and I'm going to give you this. Man, the virtue of that gift, that's the benefit that I have. 1 Peter 2, 21 let me give you just 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you're healed. So ponder this. What he, what the gift of God exactly did for you. Let me tell you something, my friend. He took your place. He took your death and he offered, he's offering you tonight his life. If you're here in this room this evening and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, can I tell you, he is offering you himself this evening. Tonight. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you religious. I'm not trying to get you to where you can come to be baptized. I want you to understand something, that if you are lost without Jesus Christ, you don't have to stay that way. He's offering himself to you because he took your place. All right, the, the how of the gift. Back in verse number 7, Paul instructs the Corinthians of the how of their giving. Don't miss this. You know, context is an amazing thing. It's, there's significance in it. God puts it in the right order. He said, I want you to give, keep, 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 doing, keep doing what you're doing. You're having a big influence. You're having a big part. And you're doing all of these things. And then he ends up from all of that encouragement saying, by the way, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. But there's a verse that really, I think, shows us the heart of a true giver. I want you to go back to verse number 7 and listen to what he says. He said, every man, this is, this is 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Now look at it. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Not only did Christ give, but look at how he gave. Remember we're talking about pondering? Wasn't it just Christ give? Look at how that he gave. Sometimes one of the most precious things regarding a gift is how it's given. If you're, if, again, if you're in a family, I'm going to give you a couple of verses and we're going to move. If you're in a family... Sometimes you're, I don't know how, sometimes larger families, they'll do like a, they'll draw names. You know, now don't answer this out loud, but any of you in a large family that you drew names, sometimes you draw a name of somebody that you really don't want to buy a gift for. Be honest. You, some of you are laughing and hiding your head. That's what that means is you got their name this year. And you'll pick that name out and you buy it out of obligation, not out of delight. Right? Now, I would encourage you if you're going to participate in it because you might want your Amazon gift card that's coming to you. So just go ahead and get the gift and, you know, keep peace in the family. But others, man, there, there's sometimes that, that gifts are given out of, out of delight. Out of delight. Man, I, 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 don't, want, I don't want to give that, that illustration, but, man, I'm telling you, they mean something when they're given out of delight. You know what the, what the Scripture tells us? Hebrews 12, 20, 12, 2 says this, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. You know what that tells me? Man, it, it cost him something. It wasn't an easy gift. It wasn't a cheap gift. But it wasn't a gift that he said, God, I hate to do this. 
God, look at them. They're, they're, they're a bunch of wickedness. I don't, why should, God, why are you making me? No, it wasn't that kind of gift. He looked at us. He's the creator, remember? John 1. We are the creation. And yet God, the creator, looked down on his creation. You ever wonder why God just didn't start over? It wouldn't have been any problem for him. Think about it. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been any problem for God to just say, okay, y'all messed up. <laughs> Clean slate. I'm not trying to be irreverent, but I'm telling you, it wouldn't have been a problem for God. It wouldn't have been nothing. Why did God put up with a fallen race of people? God created us for fellowship. God created us as free moral agents because he wanted a crowd of people who would choose him. Not angels that was created specifically to worship, but people to choose him to worship with. And we blew it. Why didn't God just wipe us out? Let me tell you why. For some reason that only God in heaven knows, he loves us. He loves you. He loves you tonight. He loves me tonight. And instead of doing all that, who before the mud seals of this earth was ever laid, God already had a plan of redemption. Man, there's a lot of preaching in this, but I'm just telling you, it was not an unthoughtful gift. It wasn't a last-minute gift. God made preparation. Before man ever fell, God had the fail safe. And he said, I'll go. Lord, I'll go. The only way they're ever going to be redeemed, the only way we're ever going to restore that relationship is if they have a perfect sacrifice, I'll go. Man, I'm telling you, he went out of his delight. Out of his delight. <clears throat> Jesus died for you because he wanted to offer himself to you that you could have his salvation. That, that's a gift. Let's look at the third thing, and this, this is short. I just want to challenge you with something. The verdict because of God's gift. What's, what's it mean? What's the verdict because of a gift? What, does it matter if I accept it or I, I reject it? Well, there's the question, isn't it? If I don't accept it, I'm not going to reap the benefits of it. That's just gift given 101, Right? If I don't accept it, it's not going to do me any good. It's there. It's offered to me. Listen, if I, if I throw you the keys tonight to a, to, a brand new, to a brand new Ferrari. Now, y'all may not, some of you, with, you can't get a car seat in a Ferrari. No, but it makes a sweet date night. I'm just telling you. And if I was, if I was to, throw, to offer you, you said, right here, it's free. It ain't going to cost you anything. Now, let me tell you something. That's, that pales in comparison. You still going to have to put tires on it. You're going to have to put gas in it. You're going to have to change the oil. You've got to do all that stuff. But it'd be fun to drive. Now, you've got to pay the taxes on it if I buy it. You got, you're responsible for the taxes. But if I lay those keys at you and you never pick that key up and, and get in the car and take it, it ain't doing you any good. No, I could put it in your name, but it's not going to do you any good if you won't drive it. So what is, what is this gift? What is the verdict? For those of us who have, accepted this gift. For those of us who have, read, what is the, the verdict of this? I'll give you the verse. You know it. You can quote it. Romans 8.1. We, we, I've quoted it often. But there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now this goes back to the whole crux of the message. God offered himself. He said, you can have me. You can have me. I'm all, here I am. You can have me. I'll abide in you. You can abide in me. You can have me. The significance of that is, is he took my death and my sin and all of that and he hung on Calvary and he gave me his life and eternity. Now for those of us who have accepted that gift, he said there's, no, there's therefore now no condemnation. I'll never have to worry about hell. I'll never have to worry about hearing depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you. I'll never feel a flame. I'll never, I'll never feel the rejection. Uh, listen, I will never feel the forsaking that Christ took upon himself on Calvary when the Father turned his back on the Son. I'll never feel that. Why? I've received the gift. That's the verdict. Innocent. And now when he sees me now, he sees me different than he saw me before I got saved. Before Christ, he sees me different now. Why? Because he sees one that he has forgiven, he has justified, he has declared righteous, right, and holy because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the verdict. And we got, we got people all over this world that's living and they're, they're burdened with guilt, they're burdened with sin, they're burdened with troubles, they're burdened with trial. But listen, for those that receive the free gift, they can live and be set free and live a life of liberty, 
and a life of joy. Man, the benefit of those who have accepted. Paul said this, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And rightfully so. Now, using the same word as gift that's found in our text, Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well. This is another instance of using this word. I'm done. But you remember what he said as he's talking with her? He's talking to her about water. And he said, I want you to draw me a little bit of water, draw me something to drink. And, and, and well, why would you talk to me? I'm a Samaritan and whatever. And, and he said, lady, he said, he didn't say it that way. But he said, uh, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that asked of thee, thou would have asked of me and I would have given you living water. And that's, that's the, the Chris International Version. I, I paraphrase that, okay? But he said, if thou knewest the gift of God. I have a question for you tonight. This is a serious question. It's Wednesday night, and I know. Do you know the gift of God? Do you really understand what God is offering you? That God is offering himself to you. Have you received that gift? I'm not asking if you're religious. I'm not asking if you had an emotional experience. I'm not asking if you've been in a church. I'm asking, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Because he is the only way that we become recipients of this unspeakable gift. And if you do know him tonight, I'm convinced that we'll be a whole lot like this lady at the well who went back, dropped everything and said, listen, come see a man that told me everything. Say, why? She was trying to get something out of her mouth that was in her heart and to get it from point A to point B, she's struggling with it. Let me tell you something. It's an unspeakable gift tonight because of its value. It's an unspeakable gift tonight because of its virtue. And it's an unspeakable gift because of the verdict of those who receive this gift. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Do you know him tonight? I know it's Wednesday. I know who I'm talking to, but do you know him tonight? If not, why not tonight? Why not tonight? You're You're in a room full of people who are invested and they care about your soul. They're not, listen, they're not, they're not gonna judge you. You're in a room full of people who care about your soul, do you know him? If you're here, you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. There's no doubt in my mind. Have you thanked him for it? I mean, really, with pondering hearts, thanked him for this unspeakable gift. Would you stand with me tonight? I I ask you to think with me through the service and do a little pondering. If you've done that tonight and God's nudged your heart and maybe you just like to find yourself on an altar and just say, Lord, I just want to thank you for your unspeakable gift. The altar's open right now. You can come and do that right now. God, I'd just like to thank you. Just simple, just simple. God, I just want to thank you. I don't understand it all. I I can't wrap my mind around why you would do that for somebody like me, but God, thank you. If you're here tonight, would you listen listen to me carefully? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And I want to ask you this question. Do you really, really know him? I'm not trying to make you doubt your salvation. I want you to be sure about it. Do you really, genuinely know him? the value of the gift that God offered himself to you. And God took your place. He took your sin and offers you life in return. And if you'll put your faith in him, you can live a life that's without condemnation from a holy God that every created individual will stand before that holy God one day. Paul said, thanks be to God, be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Though we may not be able to explain it fully, I tell you what we can do, we can ponder on it and we can appreciate what God has done for us. There's several folks tonight praying. If you're on the altar praying, you just take your time, mind the Lord. I appreciate the Lord helping us in the service tonight. I hope he did. I hope he did. For those of us who are saved, aren't you thankful for this gift? I mean, really, could there be a greater gift than God giving himself to man? I I can think of no greater. The fallen, failing man, who, who who we still fail him daily, but yet God loves us and he granted us this gift.